Welcome to Not Entirely Unlike Tea with Christine Collins. Hey there, it's Christine Collins, and I've come for you today to debunk something that I'm pretty sure we've all heard somewhere along the way in our lifetime. And that has to do with this notion of so-called self-sabotage. In my experience, this concept has mostly been discussed in the sense of someone wanting something, having a goal, wanting to achieve something or become something, but they actually stop themselves from doing it. And the rationale is kind of confusing as to why that's happening. So I'm here to explain it in greater detail and also to reveal that the way that we've understood it previously is kind of wrong. So I think the biggest misconception about alleged self-sabotage is that we have this like some kind of evil little inner genius who's deliberately screwing us up and not allowing us to be happy. And a lot of times it's connected to a belief that we don't actually deserve the thing, we're not worthy of the thing. And that's not to say that that never ever happens because it probably does, but I think that there are layers and the human mind is a lot more complex than wanting something or not wanting something. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you're a coach and you have a client who their goal is to get home every day after work or if they're an entrepreneur when they're finished with their work. Let's face it, it doesn't ever really happen, but we'll just say that there's a certain time of day that they're deciding they're done for the day. And their intention upon completing their work for the day or getting home for the day is to exercise in some form, whether that's going to a gym or exercising at home. So they're telling you that that's their goal, but they're not doing it ever. Or maybe they're doing it so sporadically that we can't really say that they're achieving that goal. Now, someone might come along and call that self-sabotage but there's actually something much deeper happening. And I have worked with some people who have been in these exact kinds of situations. There's something that they want and they really do want that thing for themselves. They recognize it very clearly as being beneficial to their health, to their well-being, or to their overall desire for success and achievement in some way. It might be a business goal, it might be a financial goal, it might be a health goal, it might be a relationship goal. There are a number of different things that could be true. But if we have a misconception about why it's not happening, it's going to be much harder to help them. And so now I'm introducing to you a concept known in the NLP realm as secondary gain. All the secondary gain really means is there is something to be gained or to be kept by not moving forward with that desire or that goal. Also, more complex than that, there is a need that is being met currently by not achieving that goal. And that can be a myriad of different things depending on the person and on the situation. In the case of our person who's coming home from work exhausted and not going to the gym, they have an unmet need. So right now what they're doing when they're coming home every day is flopping down on the couch, popping on some Netflix, maybe eating some snacks. And in their eyes, they are doing the exact opposite of what they've decided they want to do or what they've set their goal to do, which is jump straight up and run off to the gym and exercise. Now, standing where we're standing right now, it might not seem that difficult to comprehend why their goal isn't happening. The person's exhausted. They have a deep need for rest because perhaps their job is really stressful. Perhaps they're on their feet during the day. And even if they aren't, their mind may be physically exhausted. And so the secondary gain in this situation is by not achieving their goal, they are recuperating and deriving some form of rest and relaxation. And we can see this play out in a variety of different similar scenarios. Let's say somebody has a financial goal, but achieving that financial goal of having more money, earning more income, or perhaps having more clients could potentially interfere with something else in their life that's also important to them, but perhaps they're not recognizing that it is. 
It may be that when their client load is low, they have the ability to run off to a morning yoga class or to catch up on their favorite Netflix episodes or to spend time with someone that's important to them. And while they really do believe that they would rather have their goal achieved and have those extra clients, there's an internal conflict happening inside them. There's the desire for the goal. There's also a fear of achieving that goal. Dumbing it down and calling this self-sabotage is incredibly unhelpful and will not allow us to get to a place of solution that gets us to actually achieving the goal or solving the issue. So the first piece is understanding the secondary gain. And when I say that, it's most definitely not in the sense of using that information to shame yourself or shame the client or to put pressure on that person to give up their Netflix or whatever the thing may be, because in denying a need and repressing that need for rest or relaxation or fun or whatever it is, we are not serving them. And if it's about ourselves, we are not serving ourselves. All the needs have to be met and it's a good opportunity to get creative and figure out how the need can be satisfied while also achieving the goal. And it's kind of like allowing these two competing priorities, these two internal competing parts to work collaboratively together in order for all of the goals to be satisfied. But when we ignore them, suppress them, or just merely water them down into confusing terms like self-sabotage that no one really understands exactly what that means, we don't get very far. So it's an interesting opportunity to take a look at the things that you are really trying to achieve. And particularly if it's a situation where you feel like you should be able to do it, you really want to do it, and yet you notice yourself doing something else instead, a lot of times there is a need there. Whatever the roadblock is, whatever is the thing that you're doing instead, is not something just to ignore, shame yourself over, beat yourself up about, and just walk around feeling crappy because it's stopping you from getting to where you want to go. That's not going to be very constructive in the long term. It's much better to acknowledge it, recognize it, and see if there's a way that you can satisfy that unmet need. I know for myself, when I observe like an increase in behavior of certain types of things like more Netflix watching, more Canva rabbit holing, more distraction things happening, there's usually something that's missing. We are trying to satisfy a need in a certain way. Once we become cognizant of that thing, then we are back in the seat of power again and we can make choices. We can decide if that is the way we want to continue or not. And there's nothing wrong with consciously choosing to do the rabbit hole thing, the Netflix thing or the Canva thing or whatever that looks like, to come home for that person to come home from work and flop down on the couch and Netflix because they're choosing to do it rather than having it be an accident that's happening to them, they're recognizing within themselves, you know what, I'm effing exhausted after work. I need that 30 minutes or whatever it is when I first get home to just flop down and not do something else right away, particularly something that might be stressful. And then of course, there's all sorts of layers that you can unpack around their feelings towards exercise and the gym itself. And perhaps there's also something intimidating at the gym or whatever it looks like for that person. Those layers can also be dissected and figured out and solved, but not until there's a level of honesty that begins to happen, that begins to unfold for that person, being honest with themselves about what they actually need and to release any sense of shame over needing those things. We can't get very far if we continue to repress our need and our desire for rest, relaxation, chill time, F off time where you're not doing anything productive. Like we all need some of those things some of the time and repressing it doesn't work very well. On the surface, it looks like quote self-sabotage until you unpack what does that actually mean for that person? Why is this phenomena occurring? And let's figure out 
a constructive and creative way to address it that feels good for them so that there's a way that they can have the exercise that they want in their life and the rest and relaxation. Like, why do they have to choose between those things? Time may be limited, but time can be divided. And no amount of time will be sufficient if the situation is not clearly understood first. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you would like some extra support in getting closer towards your goals and desires, changing your mindset and your belief around those things being possible is one of the first and most important steps to getting there. And hypnosis is a fabulous way to do that while resting and relaxing all at the same time. So do check out the hypnopothecary in the show notes if that's something that interests you. And until we connect the next time, I wish you a most magical and creative rest of your day. Thanks for listening. This is Christine Collins at transformcreate.com.